Need some help? Nope. Did Layla go down without a fight? She is down. So what do you want to do? I don't know. It doesn't really feel like Christmas Eve. No, it does not feel like Christmas Eve. I did hear Chase Oaks has a playlist, though. We could watch that. Sure. You want to go get set up and I'll wrap it up in here? I will do that. Alright. Let's see. Chaseoaks.org. Here we go. Oh. You get it started? Yep, got it right here. I'll be home for Christmas. Oh, the irony. Captain Obvious. Have been for a while now. You can count on me. Please bring snow. How about toilet paper? And to kiss COVID goodbye. And presents by the tree. I got you a box of N95 masks. Merry Christmas. Okay, Mr. Scrooge. What? Sounds like somebody needs some worship. Okay, let's check out some worship.
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears in the soul. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. pretty great yeah it really was what's next uh let's see here uh lavish liz's luxurious loot box hm, interesting the following video is brought to you by peas give peas a chance all we need is to give peas a chance now available in christmas medley you guys it's lavish liz here I am so excited. I'm gonna be giving away my very first ever giveaway. You guys, Lavish Liz's luxurious loot box. Mom, it's gonna be come help me in the bathroom. You guys, the first thing you're gonna get in the box is this adorable ornament. It can go on any Christmas tree. It is hand 
painted by a six-year-old you guys next we have this really cute little christmas box um i love that you can like put anything in here um just uh you know anything that you want to keep safe um just it's really cute and then you can put the, uh the top on there okay and then we have this adorable little christmas ornament as well but it's a candy cane the best part about this one you guys you can make it to any shape any shape your heart desires okay my favorite color for christmas is this color um it's a little used but you're gonna get this in your box too you guys really beautiful okay and then we have the christmas medley you will not believe how everybody loves us at the christmas parties you are gonna love it sponsored by our sponsor peas look at this amazing you guys you guys this is amazing oh mm. You guys are going to love these peas. I cannot tell you enough good stuff about them. They are my absolute favorite. So do not forget about the peas, guys. You guys are going to love it. Wow, that was random. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Who wants peas for Christmas? Oh, come on. Give peas a chance. Okay. Peas are gross, and no one wants them for Christmas. Let's see what's next. Uh, Chase Oaks, welcome. Hey there. Merry Christmas, and thanks for letting Chase Oaks Church be a part of your Christmas celebration. Wow. It's like they brought the service into our homes this year. It's like he's right here. If you're new to Chase Oaks, and if you would like more information on how to get connected around here, we would love to have the chance to interact with you. If you would text the word NEW to 58578, we will send you some info and try to answer any questions that you might have. Also, you're invited to join us after the first of the year for a new sermon series we have called The Gamble. You know, there are all kinds of things that promise to make our lives more fulfilling and significant, but it's usually only after we've gone all in on those things that we discover their inability to deliver on those promises. We are going to examine those bad bets that we stake our lives on and see if Jesus has a better prescription for how to find joy and fulfillment. The Gamble is a five-week sermon series that starts on January 8th, and you're going to want to make sure that you catch every weekend. All right, that's all I have. Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a great holiday season. You will stay true You were remains true Even when my thoughts don't line up I will stand tall On each promise you made Let the rest fade away There's a peace far beyond our understanding
Wow, that was incredible. Yeah. Makes me look forward to tomorrow when we uh, get to see the annual talent show. Aw, she practices for an hour and then blesses us with her giftedness. Aw, I can't wait. I know. We really do have some great traditions. Like my mom's eggnog? Mmm, I can taste it now. Would you like some eggnog? I keep meaning to ask her for the recipe. Well, since we're Zooming Christmas dinner tomorrow, I will remind you to ask her. Hi. Hi, Grand... Oh, you're muted. You gotta push the... Somebody tell Grandma she's muted. Yeah, well, at least we don't have to go through the white elephant gift exchange with my family. Oh, what do you mean? You don't want to have to explain the rules ten times before we ever start? Now, how many times can it be stolen? We said three times. Who said? You said three times. I said nothing of the sort. Twice is the official white elephant rule. Everybody knows that. Official? That's rich. Now, wait a minute. I don't understand. Can you explain it one more time? Yeah. And then there's your sisters. No! Once a gift has three owners, it's retired. It can't be stolen anymore. You don't even like Bath and Body Works. Yeah, everyone's always in the giving mood. Speaking of giving, I can't wait for your dad to give his legendary holiday toast. Aw, he's so thoughtful. And endearing. I'm sure it's going to be a great one this year. I've been on this earth for 72 years, and this year was, by a country mile, the worst one ever. May next year be nothing like it. You know, despite all the craziness. All the cabin fever. All the working from home. And the election shenanigans. Well, this year hasn't been completely bad. We've had some good moments. Yeah. And tomorrow we get to celebrate the one who got us through it. You mean the creators of Zoom? I mean, yeah, I'm thankful we've been able to keep in touch with everyone. How could we have gotten through this without them? I mean, work, family, friends? Um, no, not Zoom. I'm talking about Jesus. Maybe we should uh, watch Jeff's message. Oh, I knew that. I knew that. Let's just uh, see how long he goes for, though. Hmm. Oh, just 15. That's doable. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this online Christmas special. Uh, as we celebrate what may be, at least in my lifetime, the most anticipated Christmas I can remember, as uh, we just want to get to Christmas, say goodbye to 2020, say hello to a whole new year, because certainly this has been a year right, that has brought a lot of things that we don't want. And it's kind of kept us away from some things that we really do. And, and we're going to talk about one of those big ones today. It's actually a gift. Uh, it was part of the reason Jesus came, to give us this gift that can only come from Him. The gift that we're going to be talking about that all of us really want, that all of us really need, is so core to who we are that a lot of cultures around the world greet each other with a wish for each other for this particular gift. Uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed over the years I really appreciate is being able to travel just really all over the world because of ministry stuff. And, and it's really cool to see how different cultures greet each other. Uh, maybe my favorite is the Maori culture in New Zealand that do the hongi. Uh, you can do this at home if you want to. Uh, you just face each other and lean in until you touch noses. And before you say it's weird, just try it. Say Merry Christmas. Do the hongi. Um, sometimes those kind of greetings have been even a little traumatic, especially with Christians around the world who take very literally the thing in the Bible that says, greet one another with a holy kiss. Um, in a lot of cultures, they do that. Christians do that, but they'll just do the cheek. But I remember one time in the Ukraine, uh, I was there as a young adult, and there were these pastors, these men, these big beards, and, and they were uh, eating what I would call fatback, just this big thing of lard. And it was grease was just running down their beard. And they were really excited to see us because we were bringing materials to them they, they really wanted. And, 
and I was kind of the last in line of these Americans. And, and as they greeted us, the first person I knew it was coming to me, they didn't, they didn't do the cheek. They just planted one right on you. I've never prayed for Jesus to come back more than in that moment. Just, oh, Lord Jesus, please come back now. And he didn't. And I think he laughed uh, because that, th- those guys, greasy, you know, right on the kisser. And uh, that was a little traumatic. Uh, but in a lot of cultures, it's interesting to me, around the world, they greet each other with a desire for what we're going to be talking about today, this gift that Jesus came to bring that is in very short supply in a year like 2020, and it's a gift of peace. Like in Romania, the Christians uh, greet each other with pacha, peace. In the Hebrew world, shalom. In the Arabic world, salam. Uh, even the New Testament, most of the letters of the New Testament start out with a wish for peace, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in the, in the broken, messed up, fallen world in which we live, peace is often hard to really stay in, right? Because, because things are so unpredictable and so difficult. And certainly in a year like 2020, with the pandemic and the uncertainty and all the disruption, with the polarization, with all that's happened in, in race relations and all that's happened in the politics of our culture and, and the just splitting apart in our culture, it's been a year of angst and anxiety and disruption and difficulty, certainly not one of peace. But 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came into the world, he came into a world very similar to that. In fact, their Uh, Their time had not been months. They had been in a bad situation for centuries, the people of God. They were desperate for peace because they'd been under the domination of these foreign governments for centuries that made life extremely difficult and uncertain for them. And their one hope is that God had promised them in the Bible over and over again and through the prophets that He would send a Messiah, that He would send a Savior, that He would send someone to change all of that. Uh, One of those prophecies that talks about the birth of Jesus that we celebrate at Christmas is Isaiah 9, 6. And it says this about Jesus. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That this baby would be the one in charge of peace, the Prince of Peace. He would bring what they had wanted for a very long time. And they assumed that what that meant is that he would change their circumstances. That uh, like in our circumstances, no more pandemic. But for them, that he would throw off the government of Rome and they would once again be in control of their own destiny and life would be good again. And, And that's what they were looking for in the Messiah. But when Jesus came, he actually came to bring something way more profound than that. A gift of peace that could only come from him. But it's not just from changed circumstances. Uh, Toward the end of Jesus' life, before he went to the cross, he spent time with his disciples and he let them know, hey, you're going to have trouble in this world, but I want to leave you with a gift. Now, one day Jesus will return. He'll make the world right again. But in the meantime, he hasn't left us alone. He left us with a gift. And this is a gift we want. This is a gift we need. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. Now, some of you are going to get some gifts soon in this Christmas season, and you're going to have to kind of fake it like you love it, right? I mean, you're going to get something and be like, oh, you know, maybe you're a kid and you really want a toy and you get a sweater and you got to act like, oh, this is so great. I've always wanted this. Or, Or maybe your husband gives you a new vacuum cleaner. And hey, if that happened and you want a vacuum cleaner, great. But husbands, if you If you're counting on that, you may want to have a backup plan. But whatever, right? You just think, oh, thank you. I've always wanted one of those, right? But the gift of peace is one that we all want, that we all need. And Jesus came to bring it. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. It's a peace that the world cannot give. Why? Because it comes from what Jesus came to bring. And that is the presence of God in our lives. Peace with God, a relationship with God that means He's with us always so we can experience the peace of God in whatever we face. Uh, He had just said that a few verses earlier, my Father will love them, those who believe, and we will come and make our home with each of them. It's His presence that brings peace. See, peace doesn't come, the kind of peace that only comes from Jesus, the one that He wants us to give. It's not just peace that comes from the absence of bad circumstances. The peace that He wants to give that's really profound, 
what the Bible elsewhere calls perfect peace, is peace that comes from the presence of God in whatever circumstances we face. When I think about that, there's one story that I go back to instantly in my mind, every single time. It's from 1972. I was six years old, just turned six. It was New Year's Eve. The next day uh, was the Sugar Bowl in 1972. So I was in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, Alabama was playing uh, New Orleans. I mean, Alabama was in New Orleans playing Notre Dame. If you're curious, Notre Dame won 24-23. Some of you, that makes you happy. And I'm sure Jesus loves you and I, you know, we'll work on it. But I don't even remember the game. I was six years old. But what I do remember is the night before, Bourbon Street, French Quarter, New Year's Eve, as a six-year-old. It was crazy. I mean, we were there around midnight and intimidating scene for a six-year-old, right? Noisy, loud, drunk people, all the college students. I mean, everybody there just in things that I never thought I'd see before, right? Girls doing things for beads, or I remember looking, I'll keep it G-rated, but I remember looking through, and I still remember some of the things I saw in these clubs that I don't know why these people are doing that. Still don't really know why people are doing that. But I remember asking my dad about it. I remember what he said, but I remember just the craziness, crazy, crazy of it. But I also remember, and this is my big memory, is that I was, despite all that crazy, in perfect peace. No anxiety, no apprehension, no angst, just like perfect peace. And you know why? Because my six-year-old hand was in the hand of my dad, who I knew to be the strongest, smartest person in the world. And I didn't have to worry. I was fine. As long as my dad was there, as long as my hand was in his hand, I was fine. Now, hey, if he wasn't there, I would have been in the corner crying, but he was there. And that's what Jesus is saying, is he came to bring us the gift of the presence of God that brings peace in our lives, no matter what crazy we go through. And our dad, our heavenly father, when we say yes to a relationship with him, he really is the strongest, smartest being on the planet. And he has us. And that's why we can be at perfect peace, no matter what. That's the gift that Jesus came to bring. I don't know what 2021 is going to bring, but if we're just counting on changed circumstances, that's weak because Jesus wants to give us something way bigger than that. What does that mean? Well, it really starts with beginning a, a relationship with God. Jesus came to bring peace with God so that we could have the presence of God in our life and experience the peace of God. See, when Jesus came as a baby, he grew up, he died on the cross. If you know that part of the story, why did he do that? to pay the penalty for sin that you and I deserve because there was this barrier between us and God. That's what I mean about peace with God. He came to remove that barrier, the guilt of our sin. He took the penalty on himself. He offers forgiveness and a relationship with God as a gift that once we receive it can never be taken away. And today may be your day this Christmas to say, you know what, I want to do that. And we'll pray here in just a moment as an opportunity. For those of us who maybe have taken that step, who have a relationship with God, how easy, right, is it to find ourselves without the peace that we could be living in, especially in a time like this, right? And all the anxiety, all the uncertainty, all the angst, maybe even the anger, whatever we're going through right now, whatever loss, whatever thing, it's, it's not an easy year for peace. But I believe God wants us to experience it even this Christmas in 2020. And, and the Bible tells us how to get it. Once we have a relationship with God, when we find ourselves anxious, it says in Philippians, don't be anxious about anything, but with everything, with prayer and supplication, make your needs known to God. Make your requests known to God, and He will give you peace that passes all understanding. Meaning we just turn our worries, we turn our anxieties, our angst, our anger, whatever, we turn it into a prayer request, we give it to God, and in return we get peace that makes no sense. No, because our circumstances may not have changed, but we have this peace because our hand is in His and we know that He has us. And I want to give us the opportunity to do that because I want this Christmas to be one in which we know the peace that Jesus came to bring, the Prince of Peace. And so will you join me in prayer right now, just right where you are, and, and let's pray together. And, and for some of you, I'll just guide your prayer. Just You may want to begin a relationship with God and say yes to the offer of His presence in your life and say, God, I want you in my life. I need to know your peace. I need to know your presence. And if you came here to make that possible and you offer that as a gift, I believe that. I say yes. And for those of you who've begun a relationship with Jesus already, 
Uh, right now, just in your own heart, I don't know what your anxieties are. I don't know what your uncertainties are. I don't know what you're going through. God does. And I encourage you just to name them to God right now in your heart and say, God, I want to give you these anxieties. And I ask, as I give them to you, that you give me your peace, knowing that you have it and that, yeah, I'm in this crazy situation, but my hand is in your hand and I'm going to be okay. And on behalf of all of us, I'll pray. Father, thank you so much for the gift of peace that Jesus came to bring and leave us with between now and when he returns. And I pray, as crazy as 2020 is, that this Christmas will be a year of joy, of love, of hope, and of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round your virgin mother and child, holy so Malaika Bwana akawatokea ghafla. Utukufu wa Bwana ukawaangazia kutoka pande zote. Wakaogopa sana. Yo anjo les disse não tem mais, porque aqui vos trago novas de grande alegria que será para todo o povo. Y de repente apareció con el ángel una multitud de ejércitos celestiales alabando a Dios y diciendo: Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace. 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 Peace to those on whom his favor rests.
Man, I am glad we watched that. Yeah, me too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.